Fire does not discriminate. Fire can start at any time, anywhere, and for reasons you do not expect. Once started, fire can develop far more quickly than people expect and in no time cause significant damage to property. And tragically, and all too frequently, cause injury and deaths. Building regulations and fire safety legislation in the UK are aimed at ensuring that buildings provide a minimum standard of safety from fire. And in particular, that people are given early warning and protection so that they may be able to react quickly to any fire, turn their backs and walk safely away. However, in premises where people are particularly vulnerable, with limited mobility, such as care home residents, they may not be able to respond as quickly or even be able to hear or be aware what a fire alarm means. In these circumstances, the residents will certainly need assistance to escape and therefore the standard of fire safety and levels of staff training required is much higher. The frequency and quality of evacuation drills is also critical and should be simulated to reflect the size and complexity of the building. There are a number of fire training films readily available that you may have already viewed and learnt the basics of fire safety. You'll also hopefully have previously received training in fire safety from a knowledgeable and competent person and had the opportunity to practice realistic emergency scenarios. Whilst the following film may help to refresh some of this knowledge and understanding, it has primarily been created to focus on lessons learnt from recent fires. And in particular, to focus attention on the need to ensure that your emergency plan will actually work with the numbers of staff available in the worst case scenario, typically at night, and that your building will support any evacuation strategy based on progressive horizontal evacuation. It cannot be overstated the importance of good quality regular staff training and fire practice in order to achieve successful evacuation should a fire break out. Fortunately, most people never experience a serious fire. Don't let the first time you experience a fire be your last or the last for those you care for. All staff should receive regular fire safety training. The training should be delivered by someone with sufficient fire safety knowledge and be adapted so that it's site specific for your premises. So we've got three elements. Does anybody know what the three elements are? It could be you on duty when a fire breaks out and you will need to know what to do. You may even be personally criminally liable if you fail to follow your training and someone is hurt or worse. It is always good practice to record any staff training. Don't take that it will never happen to me approach and feel that you don't need to listen. A serious fire could happen to you and you will need to act decisively. We have to have three elements which we call a fire triangle. Who knows what they might be? What Please. would it be? Heat, that's the one. Take an active part in your fire safety training and if you are unsure of anything, ask. Also, make sure you practice what you've been taught and stay fire safety vigilant at all times. But that's what we call the fire triangle. Having been in the position to manage homes for many, many years, um, there are many departments that you have to think about. I think for me the most important thing is always to remember health and safety and in particular uh, when that is related to fire. Many, many managers um, have a tendency to rely on other people to ensure that all of these safety measures are in place. However, from my perspective, I believe that the home manager and all of the staff that, that she or he manages it is all of their responsibility to ensure that the health and safety messages, in particular in relation to fire, get across to all departments, all staff. Training. Quality training. Regular and realistic training for all staff on induction and as part of routine refresher training is vital in ensuring that if the worst should happen, your carefully prepared emergency plans based on a site-specific fire risk assessment will actually work without any delay. Fires can grow very quickly and in an emergency, you'll not have time to consult each other, refer to written documents or hold a debate. Training should ideally be recorded. 
By recording your training, you'll help ensure that no one is missed, suitable refresher training can be programmed, all relevant subject areas are covered, and if required, evidence for audit or investigation can be produced. Play an active part. Everyone has a part to play, and you cannot afford not to be actively involved. You may be personally held accountable if something were to go wrong. Ask questions. Get involved now. Your emergency plan should be based on the design of the building and the findings of your fire risk assessment. It should be proven to work, that is, it must be regularly tested. Due to the generally low numbers of staff and the vulnerability of residents, it is likely that your plan will be based on progressive horizontal evacuation. That is, that those closest to the fire are progressively moved away on the same level to another fire compartment where the fire should not spread for a period of time. Progressive horizontal evacuation relies on protected areas given at least 30 minutes fire separation, depending on the identified risk level. You should be able to evacuate residents from any protected area in two and a half minutes to another area where they should be at relative safety. If this cannot be achieved, then you may need a delayed evacuation strategy and this would require 60 minutes fire separation. Emergency plans and strategies. Content. Emergency plans and strategies should be carefully tailored to your building, taking into account its age, construction type, the layout of fire compartments and anticipated fire growth and spread. It's likely that your plan will involve progressive evacuation from those compartments at imminent risk from fire and therefore a site plan which highlights fire compartment lines can be invaluable for training purposes as well as in case of a real emergency. Workability. The plans should be practical and take into account the likely staff available at all times, especially at night, that are needed to evacuate the largest fire compartment without the aid of the fire and rescue service. A key factor to any successful evacuation is having the right number of staff on duty at any one time. During the day, this is not normally a problem. However, at night, you may only have two or three members of staff on duty. Your evacuation procedures should not rely on fire service intervention. Therefore, you need to make sure you can evacuate everyone within the building with the minimum numbers of staff available.
Okay, guys, we're going to open it up from here. Okay. Oh, let it drop out. Okay. What's going? What's going on? Ian, there's a yeah. fire. We need to get you out oh. as quickly as oh. possible. Oh. We're going okay. to sit you round. Right. That's it. Okay. That's it. That's it. Yep. Oh. Right. Don't take too long, will you? That's it. Well done. Oh. Well done. Oh. Okay. I don't like all this smoke. I know. That's fine. Just bring your legs up for me and bend. Yeah, that's it. We'll get you out as quickly as we can. Will I be safe in this? We will be absolutely safe, I promise. We will keep you safe. Have you done this before? Oh. Yes, we have. Oh. You are completely safe, Ian. We're nearly there. Well done. Well done. Oh, don't like the smoke. There we go. Okay. Okay. Oh. You should know how to and have practiced moving a mobile residence which may involve the use of slides, evacuation sheets, evacuation chairs or other specialist devices. If your plan is to wheel residents out in their beds, then you must ensure that the beds will fit through any openings. Oh, I don't like this. <coughs> I don't like this smoke. Here we oh. are. Here you are. For me, it's not just the responsibility of the manager or even senior management. It is actually the responsibility of every staff member that works within a residential care setting where you are looking after the health and safety and well-being of vulnerable residents in your care. So everybody right down to domestics, care assistants, gardener, maintenance person, everybody has a responsibility to ensure that they know how they will behave in the event of a fire. There may be an opportunity for you to consider a mutual aid agreement with another care home nearby, whereby in the event of a fire at your premises, the staff at the other care home are alerted and can assist you with your evacuation. OK, Ian, oh. there's a fire and we a need fire. to get you out as quickly as we can. Oh dear. Right. I'm just going to use this. Well, will I be safe? Will yes, we'll be, be safe. safe. Oh. OK. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to bring your legs around. Yeah, we will. Uh, we will. I don't like the old floor. I know. Why are you taking me? In a situation when it's an emergency, particularly when people see fire or they see smoke, the thing that happens is panic. So when somebody is panicking or are extremely upset, anxious or stressed, then they often do really unusual things that they maybe wouldn't do when it wasn't an emergency situation. Evacuation. Staffing numbers. You should have sufficient trained staff on duty at all times, especially at night, when staff numbers required for care may typically be lower than during the day. If necessary, you should consider mutual aid schemes where additional staff may be alerted by pager or other suitably robust call system from neighbouring homes in case of an emergency. Fire service assistance. Your evacuation plan should not rely on the fire and rescue service to assist, as this is your legal duty. The fire service may be attending other calls and therefore may not be able to help move vulnerable patients in time. Equipment. Be familiar with your evacuation equipment where it is and how to use it. It's also a good idea to have a plan B, including awareness and knowledge of other equipment and tactics, just in case large numbers need to be evacuated. Bed evacuation. If relying on wheeling residents out on beds in case of fire, ensure that the beds will actually fit through doorways and other restrictions, and that the use of any lift is suitable in case of fire.
Fire separation and compartmentation within your premises plays a vital role in any emergency plan for the safe evacuation of your residents and staff. Put simply, good separation and compartmentation will buy you time to evacuate vulnerable residents. Problems with fire separation are not always easily visible and may be hidden above suspended ceilings or below floors. In older buildings especially, it is crucial that proper checks are carried out to ensure, for example, that pipes and cables have not created gaps and holes where fire can spread. It may be necessary to carry out an invasive assessment to confirm this. Fire doors are also designed to maintain separation and compartmentation. Fire doors which are propped open will assist the spread of fire and smoke and may cause escape routes to become smoke logged at a very early stage in the evacuation. Fire separation. Compartmentation. Fire compartmentation is simply ensuring that a fire will be contained in the room it started and will not spread between rooms and other areas for a minimum period of time. And depending on the requirement and risk, this may typically be 30 or 60 minutes, though can sometimes be longer. This is fundamental to ensuring you'll have sufficient time to evacuate persons immediately at risk before fire spreads and the smoke, heat and flames prevent escape. Good compartmentation will also help limit damage and hopefully ensure that your home can get back to business quickly. Contractors Ensure that any contractors who work on your building are aware of its compartmentation and where they will need to ensure any holes or openings created for cables or pipes are properly sealed to prevent fire spread. It's also good practice to check that this has taken place after the work is complete. Be particularly aware of any increased risks during works where openings may not be sealed and therefore you may need to be particularly vigilant and take other measures to ensure safety from fire. Older buildings or converted buildings. In older or converted properties, it's more likely that there will be hidden voids and as such, fire risk assessments may need to be invasive, looking into the building fabric to ensure fire cannot spread unnoticed between compartments. This may require looking above full ceilings, in roofs, under floorboards and in other closed cavities. All staff need to have a good understanding of the fire alarm system and procedures that relate to it. They should be able to interpret the fire alarm panel and establish the location of a fire. A plan of the building next to the fire alarm panel outlining the zones will assist them in investigating any fire and understanding which areas need to be evacuated first. Fire alarm panels can be confusing if you don't know what you are looking at. In a fire situation you are likely to panic. Without understanding the alarm panel you may cause delays in locating the fire and evacuating those most at risk. It is also important that staff procedures outline exactly when and who calls the fire service. Quite often staff assume somebody else has called the fire service and it may take quite some time to realise that the fire service hasn't even been called. Fire panel right. showing zone 6. The fire alarm panel can quickly provide vital information on the location of the fire. Resources can then be properly directed at evacuating those residents at immediate risk to a safer area. Me? Claire. Yeah. Claire. Okay. Right, everyone's here. Okay. Right, okay, you need to make the call to the fire brigade then, please, Sean. Raising the alarm. Things to consider. Coverage. A fire alarm in a care home should provide extensive coverage with detectors in most areas, including all rooms, larger cupboards and voids. This is because of the vulnerability of the occupants and the need for the earliest possible warning. Purpose of a fire alarm. The purpose of a fire alarm is to provide early warning that there may be a fire. It's generally not designed to call the fire service immediately and as such, Staff should be trained how to investigate any alarm and take appropriate actions. Only call the fire service when it's identified that there is or may be an actual fire. Interpreting the fire alarm panel. 
Staff should be able to interpret the fire alarm panel to identify where a fire may be located so as to start any search and commence any evacuation that may be necessary from the point of greatest danger. Silencing and resetting. If the fire service are called, do not silence or reset the alarm until instructed to do so by the fire service incident commander. It is important to have somebody who can meet the fire service when they arrive at your premises. This person should provide the fire crews with clear and accurate information relating to the location of the fire and the number of people who are still inside the building. Any floor plans of the building should be passed across to the fire crews as this will give them a clearer understanding of the layout. Fire service access is extremely important. The quicker we can get to the premises, the quicker we can start fighting the fire. You should ensure that all staff and visitors park their vehicles sensibly, ensuring that fire hydrants are not blocked and access for the fire appliance is not adversely affected. Ensure you pass on relevant information, such as where the fire is believed to be. Other information may include who is at risk or missing and what actions have been undertaken so far. Highlight any particular hazards to fire crews, for example oxygen cylinders. Arrival of the Fire and Rescue Service Access Always ensure that at all times good access is given to your care home so that if the Fire and Rescue Service are needed they can get their equipment and firefighters quickly to as near as possible to the fire. Identifiable person Ensure that someone is clearly identified who can meet the fire service at the entrance and who has all the relevant information available including where the alarm panel is showing the fire to be what is on fire, what is currently being done to evacuate, any particular risks to fire crews and any other relevant information. Fire Wallet It's helpful if all relevant information, including plans of the building showing fire compartments, could be passed to the fire service on their arrival and having this in one place, such as a fire wallet, which is one way of achieving this. If the wallet is kept in a special location, the fire service should be made aware. Fire hydrants. Ensure that parked cars do not obstruct fire hydrants as the fire service may quickly need additional water in an emergency. In the event of a fire, the majority of people will try to exit the building through the same door they came through to get into the building. Many people will not even notice signs showing alternative escape routes and exits. It is important that all of your staff are aware of all of the escape routes and exits throughout the building. They can then direct people to the nearest exit, providing it is safe to use. All escape routes should be kept clear. 
Not only does this reduce the chance for fire occurring in the escape routes, but it also prevents people from injuring themselves or tripping over items whilst escaping and ensures the width of the escape routes is sufficient for the number of people evacuating, particularly if residents need to be moved on their beds or with other large pieces of equipment. Many escape routes will contain doors that are required to be kept secured during normal day-to-day -day operation. If these doors are required for means of escape purposes, they must be easily openable in the event of an emergency and must not rely on a key or a code. All emergency exit doors should be checked on a daily basis to ensure they are in good working order. Means of escape. Be prepared. What may seem easy in the middle of the day when you're awake, not panicking or being affected by heat and smoke, can become more difficult if the worst should happen, potentially at night, and when you're least expecting it. Keep escape routes protected. Fire doors that are not kept shut will quickly allow heat and smoke into corridors and other escape routes, seriously affecting people's ability to escape safely. Keep escape routes clear. Do not allow escape routes to be used for storage or to contain any obstructions. What may appear not to be a problem in normal use could lead to real difficulties in a fire situation where, for example, people could trip and quickly cause a blockage. Know your alternative escape routes. You should always be able to turn your back on any fire and walk away. Become familiar with other ways out of your building should normal routes not be available during a fire. The the training was there. We're talking about residents' lives. You're responsible. You are the registered manager. absolutely amazing. I cannot believe how well you all did. But listen, we need to get some facts down here. I need timing. So, Tara, what time did the fire brigade arrive? Okay, so fire brigade arrived at 10.05. Learning the lessons. Criminal proceedings. If something goes seriously wrong, you may be personally held accountable in criminal proceedings if you have failed to do something that you were trained and equipped to do. You may also be required to explain your actions in coroner's court and in civil actions. Review Always review any incident, either a near hit or actual fire, so that any lessons can be captured and learnt. The Care Quality Commission's purpose is to make sure health and social care services provide people with safe, effective, compassionate, high quality care and we encourage care services to improve. Our role is to monitor, inspect and regulate services to make sure they meet fundamental standards of quality and safety. Our fundamental standards were introduced into the Health and Social Care Act 2008, Regulations 2014, following recommendations made by Sir Robert Francis following his inquiry into care at Mid Staffordshire NHS Foundation Trust. The role of the CQC inspector is to ensure that providers of health and social care are meeting the regulations contained in the fundamental standards. We also provide performance ratings of a service to help people choose care. These ratings can range at the top end of the scale as outstanding, to good, to requires improvement and at the lower end of the scale, inadequate. Services are rated in five key areas. Are they safe? Are they effective? Are they caring? Are they responsive and are they well led? Fire safety is a fundamental element of a residential care or nursing home inspection and is considered under the safe question. Are there enough staff on duty to assist residents in the event of a fire? 
Is there sufficient cover at night time to ensure that residents can be safely evacuated? When services do not meet the safety requirements of our regulations, we may take enforcement action. This can range from the provider telling us how they are going to fix the problem and by when, to more serious levels of enforcement. Where people are not safe, we can take action to close the service. Care Quality Commission. Enforcement and Regulation. As well as inspections by the fire service to check compliance with the fire safety order, you'll receive inspections from the Care Quality Commission, CQC. Both organisations are here to help you with your responsibilities and have a wealth of knowledge and experience. I want to talk to you about fire sprinkler systems. You are three times more likely to die in a fire where you live than anywhere else. Residential care homes house some of the most vulnerable people in our community who are likely to need significant assistance to escape in the event of any fire. The need for robust fire safety measures and frequently rehearsed evacuation plans are paramount. Evacuation plans will place significant reliance on staff to evacuate residents progressively away from a fire into safer compartments before the fire overwhelms the fire safety measures in place and begins to spread. Sprinkler systems will identify, control and suppress a fire, helping to prevent any spread and therefore creating more time to implement an evacuation. You may not even need to evacuate if the fire is extinguished by the sprinkler system. It's like having a firefighter on duty 24-7 in every room. In the fire service, we are very aware that fire can start at any time, anywhere and for reasons you do not expect. We would like to share this knowledge with you and have created a website where the causes and circumstances of real fires are shared. Please visit www.blackmuseum.info. Safer by knowing.